Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today I'm going to be showing the team in the Great League Remix that got me my ELO reveal, and that's with Dubwool. Now what's so special about Dubwool? Dubwool is a very similar Pokemon to Vigoroth, and the thing is, Vigoroth got banned in the Great League Remix. So I just decided to feature this as basically a substitute to Vigoroth you can essentially use in the Great League Remix. So it really was supposed to just be a fun idea, but it actually worked extremely well using Double in the Great League Remix, as I played three sets with it, and all of them were foreign ones. So I think Steelix is a very incredible lead. I'm running Earthquake on it just to save charge TMs. I do think Crunch is probably going to be the preferred charge move. It just makes Steelix so much less slow. Double on this team actually was paired with the Steelix just because when I was building teams, I saw the Steelix was very high on the PV poke. It always baffles me when it comes to the Great League Remix that Steelix is always super high, but when it comes to the Open Great League, that's the complete opposite. So PV poke, like I said, recommended the double with the Steelix, which I don't know why, both are pretty weak to fighting types even though steelix can probably just invest a bunch of shields versus fighting types probably not the best strategy the mantine would be a way better partner for steelix but anyways double is just supposed to be a super flexible safe switch because opponents have to play around either wild charge or payback or take risks the final teammate is going to be polyrath i do think it can be a effective closer as ice and water is pretty flexible overall and with a shield advantage assuming you generate one you can easily just overwhelm the opponent with like icy winds and you'll come out of matchups with a bunch of health to sweep games now i can't say you're going to have the same success as i did with this team as i was playing in the rank 18 range and it just felt a bit too easy also, this isn't the best team comp for the double. I have no idea what it is, but I'm pretty sure you can come up with a better team composition overall than mine. Now, accessibility wise on this team, I really am not seeing a lot here versus like Wulu is like the easiest Pokemon to build on this team just because you can get it through the Go Battle League rewards. Sure, you can get a Shadow Onyx right now, but it's just going to be struck with frustration and I'm pretty sure we're going to have the Rocket event at the end of the month or the end of next month. I will have to look at the event calendar just to double check, but definitely don't take my word for it. Now let's get into these battles. This one, I'm just going to say this was hard counter. The Quagsire is just going to have basically the best matchup into the Steelix, having incredible pacing, able to deal with Steelix in seconds, an extremely bulky Pokemon, and then there were two water and poison types, which are horrible for the Polyrath. Speaking of horrible Pokemon, Registeel. This is a disaster for the entire team as the double is nearly going to get one shot by Focus Blast, Polyrath gets one shot by Zap Cannon, and the Steelix isn't going to deal much damage to the Registeel. Luckily, my opponent sends in a Pelipper, so now they have to make an extremely risky call if I'm running Wild Charge or not. Opponent commits a shield, so we already generated an advantage in this matchup. We generated realistically two advantages, as we have the shield advantage, we have two shield advantage, oh my goodness, and the Pelipper doesn't have to be aligned with the Polyrath. I'm also able to make it to a third body slam for some chip damage. Now, I'm just going to sack my Steelix. Steelix is an extremely tanky Galarian Stunfisk. Speaking of Galarian Stunfisk, I wonder if it got banned in this format. Anyways, Steelix is going to be able to take two Weather Balls, and opponent can never farm me down with the Wing Attacks. So I have all this energy onto the Steelix, and I'm just going to use it onto the Registeel, so that way I can easily farm him down with the Polyrath. Now the Registeel is going to make a charge move, and this is where we start to use our shields. We are going to get attack drop, but it doesn't matter because they have a Shadow Steelix in the back. An ABA Steel team, and we have essentially a double fighter back line. Opponent basically disconnected at this point, so now I can just counter everything down. I'll speed up the footage just so we can move right on into the next battle. Steelix and a Gavantula, literally the best lead we could have ever gotten unless we went against like level 1 Pokemon. Opponent sends in a Jelson, and this is perfect just because the Jelson is ABA strong versus our team. 
This is why Crunch on the Steelix would be beneficial for such a matchup, but you can also just Dragon Tail, Psychic Fang spam through. Now that we have the double, I'm just going to go straight for these paybacks. Now my opponent is going to commit a shield. Also, the unique thing about this matchup is going to be that the Jelson isn't aligned to Polyrath. Now, Payback, unfortunately, isn't going to take it out, and it's in a pretty awkward HP range, and I want to keep Switch. Now, I have to go for a Body Slam here, as if I go for Payback, they could just go for the Surf. And unfortunately, Body Slam does knock out. Now, my opponent was going to aggressively switch into Shadow Dragonair to try to get the Snipe. Luckily, I wasn't able to let that happen. This should be a comfortable win now. Now one thing I would do differently in this game is I would definitely play the gel scent mirror differently. I just should have taken my shield advantage. Now Shadow Dragonair is going to take switch advantage, but it doesn't really matter as Steelix can just eat through this entire team. I am going to shield the Shadow Aqua Tail from the Dragonair. It is attack drop, but I still think it's going to deal more damage. They come in with the Govantula and all they can do is throw lunges or triple resisted cross poisons. I tried making like, I think either a combo play or like a prediction that the opponent was gonna switch. Luckily I'm in such a good spot that like that misplay is gonna basically mean nothing. Now this Jelson does have a surf or two and I think if it was able to get the second surf, it was gonna be close or it was gonna win them the game. Next game is literally the same lead, best case scenario and this time the Gavantula is staying in, so I'm just going to over farm in this matchup. This time they do go for a lunge, no triple resisted cross poison, and they send in a shadow swampert. They only go for 7 mud shots, so I can no shield this because it's just a hydro cannon. I'm just farming up with the polyrath. Now I'm not going to be able to get the counter farm down, but I'm going to have nearly 2 charge moves for whatever the opponent's going to send in, assuming this Icy Wind knocks out the Swampert. It would, of course, but if the opponent committed a shield. So, they send in Govantula, I go for the Scald, and I get the Knockout. Their final Pokemon is a Charizard, so I can literally just win the game, as Steelix users do best. Psychic Fang Spam. Now, I am throwing my moves on optimal timing. A real Steelix user would be throwing them on alignment, and... I also get a little cocky and I'm actually going to no shield this because like I'm in such a good position. So once again, another confident play really just not paying into my favor. Now I'm going to start using shields. I don't think a blast burn would knock out, but I don't want to lose and find out. Next game, we have Steelix into Polyrath. Polyrath is really bad for this team as in the mirror matchup, the opponent's Polyrath is going to have the upper hand. And it's going to have an advantageous matchup into the double. Also, pretty decent matchup in the Steelix. So, luckily, I'm able to get shields with Psychic Fangs. Honestly, there's two ways you could play this. Psychic Fangs spam like a Steelix user, or just try to call an Icy Wind, because if you don't, you still get to go into the Polyrath Mirror, and you'll be the one with an energy advantage. So, as long as they're not running Dynamic Punch, we wall the opponent's Polyrath's charge moves. So, they go for an Icy Wind, which is going to get a debuff, and now they go for a Scald, which is going to deal more damage. If this was the Ultra League Mirror, we would have had a lot more HP. They come in with a Mantine, so our shield advantage really isn't that useful here. So, I come into my double. The Mantine's going to go for an Aerial Ace. Never mind, that's a Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam's such a weird move to run on the Mantine. Anyways, their final Pokemon's Aurorus, so the double fighter backline is core breaking the Aurorus, as it has really no optimal matchups. This is going to be the best case scenario for the Aurorus. Now I just know my win con. Stall out the Switch Clock. I can farm down the Aurorus, and my Switch Clock's going to be up. Now I think I made a bit of a mistake. Just because if Mantine somehow got the farm down, I would have lost this game. But luckily, they just throw energy. I also get the Icy Wind. This is just going to seal the deal on this game. Now, honestly, if I didn't get that Icy Wind, I think two Body Slams would be enough. Now that the Icy Wind I was able to get on the Polyrath, I go for the Payback for the win. I don't know what Payback I wanted from my opponent, but I just wanted to be able to use the move. Next game, we have Steelix into a Togetic. I think this is a better matchup for the Steelix just because we're going to wall the Togetic's charge moves and we have at least effective Psychic Fangs. After a Psychic Fangs, they switch into a Polyrath, so we just gotta go for the Psychic Fangs defense drop. They no shield it and I try making a catch onto Polyrath. I'm not able to get it, but I can still just farm this down. 
They go for a Skull, which does some decent damage to our Polyrath. Luckily, they don't get the attack drop, so it's going to make this farm down pretty easy. This time, they do Icy Wind, and it doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it's going to make our energy weaker. So, I was expecting my opponent to just send in the Togetic, but that's a slow bro. This is a pretty awkward Pokemon to deal with, as it's got some pretty flexible damage into the Double, and the Surfs are going to deal some decent damage to the Steelix. Even the Confusions are going to add up for the Knockout onto the Steelix, despite the Slow Bros attack dropped. Now, I was able to get a Body Slam bait, but I'm just going to go for the Body Slam spam, just because I do think it is safer, but if I did YOLO the Payback, then the Slow Bro would just be gone. So they're double shielding the Slowbro, and I was thinking I could win the game with the Steelix, but I really think shielding the Slowbro was going to be the way to win this game. I do have shields for the Steelix, but honestly, you're going to want to use shields on the Polyrath or even the Double. Psychic Fangs aren't going to deal a lot of damage, and these Dragon Tails aren't either, no matter how defense drop the Togetic is going to be. And the opponent is running Aerial Ace. I'm very interested why they didn't just go for the area lace at the start, but my Steelix is just losing HP very slowly, and I thought Slowbro banked a move. I don't think this was a game I was counting. This time I do have to save the shield, and Slowbro is definitely not in farm down range. Slowbro actually has a lot of HP, so I somehow need to come out of this matchup with two confusions, and Steelix actually takes too much damage, so even though I had a lot of resisted damage, I really should have used the double wool to win the game. That was just a poorly played game by me, but moving on into our next game, we had Steelix into Empoleon. We have two fighters in the back, so I switch into the Double, and in comes the Dragonair. I think this is where Double shines over the Vigoroth, because Double is going to be able to significantly outpace the Dragonair, especially with the energy advantage we got versus the Vigoroth. You can see the opponent used the shield, and I'm still able to get to another charge move, and they just let their Dragonair go. So they just threw away a shield, and all they got was a little bit of fast move damage. They sent in Frostlass, which is actually a bit of a problem, just because, first of all, the opponent actually knows their counts, and secondly, Frostlass with an energy advantage is pretty dangerous. Luckily, the opponent throws an alignment, so any damage is necessary, and a full Dragon Tail through, or two, is very helpful. Steelix can barely tank two avalanches, and I try making it to the earthquake, and I lose all of that energy, so no Psychic Fang's defense drop. Frostlass is dry, so we're just going to shield a Drill Peck from the Empoleon. It is going to make two, but I'm going to be able to get the farm down, and I should have enough energy to just overwhelm that Frostlass. These counters are actually going to deal some decent damage, because they are single resisted at least, due to how typing works in Pokemon Go. This game was closer than I thought, because if opponent called a bait, I think they could have won this game, versus I just thought two Icy Winds would just win the game. Next game we have Steelix into Shadow Swampert, one of the worst matchups for Steelix, so I'm going to switch into the double, and I'm able to get a full double kick through, which goes a long way if they choose to switch out of this matchup, and they finally do into a Registeel. Now this basically walls us, as I'm not going to commit shields in this matchup, just for some double kicks and some paybacks, which I guess would add up over time, which would allow for a two hit knockout. But why would I do that when I could get a full farm down with Polyrath? Now, I probably could have thrown my energy to nullify their charge move from the Registeel, but I don't get attack drop, so I went for the correct play. However, they sent in Pelipper, so Pelipper is basically a disaster for the Polyrath Steelix duo. Shadow Swampert is still in the back for my Steelix until they switch for whatever reason. They banked a bunch of energy, but I really think they should have used it onto my Polyrath, so I'm able to get to another charge move. Icy Wind will either get the knockout or a shield, and it actually gets a shield, and my opponent isn't over farming that much. Now, Swampert's super spammy, so it doesn't really need to over farm. It can just get to charge moves. A Hydro Cannon from a Shadow Swampert is easily gonna deal more damage, so I'm just going to commit the shield, and I go for the Dragon Tail just in case my opponent throws on alignment, and which they did. Now it looked like two Weather Balls were going to knock out, but I go for the Psychic Fangs after throwing a Dragon Tail, and Pelipper is going to have a second Weather Ball, but we can barely survive this, and I can get the Dragon Tail farm down or the Psychic Fangs. So Pelipper, even though it banked all that energy, I'm going to be able to win the game with Steelix taking out two very problematic Pokemon. 
Next game, another Steelix into Empoleon matchup. So same thing, I'm just going to switch into my double and I'm over farming in this matchup. Now I want to have a bunch of energy in case the opponent switches and I don't want to shield that move in case my opponent has a strong answer for the double. Now it's just a superior, so superior can definitely take these charge moves, but luckily Polyrath doesn't have to face it anymore. They also don't show any over farming skills. Aerial Ace doesn't knock out, so they are going to be at a one Vine Whip energy advantage. So I'm just going to come into Steelix and just absorb all these charge moves. That's what Steelix can do, and I'm really hoping two shield Polyrath is going to win the game. Now it would have been close if two Frenzy Plants would have knocked out or not, but this is just going to be an Aerial Ace. Now I go for the Earthquake onto the Empoleon. Earthquake, one shots Empoleon, and their final Pokemon, Shadow Glade. Now my opponent did get denied here and I got a full dragon tail through I wasn't supposed to but I still think I can just confidently win the game as a Steelix user usually does. So just like Charizard this Shadow Glade is just getting torn up to shreds and they're just going to have to throw energy in this matchup. I'm not able to get the full farm down but now opponent is dry. Glade can get to charge moves very quickly but it also just dies very quickly as Polyrath beats down the Glade. Next game, we have Steelix into Non-Shadow Dragonair. I think the Non-Shadow is better in this matchup because the Dragon Breaths allow for Aqua Tails for a two-hit knockout. So I actually will have to give up a shield. This isn't the battle I was talking about just because it is just a Body Slam instead of an Aqua Tail. They send in a Quagsire. I bluffed an Earthquake close to it and I actually got the shield and I have a super dominant matchup. My opponent also over farmed. I don't think I should have thrown this charge move, but I think it's okay just because Scald will get the knockout. They're going to send back in the Dragonair, which this is why I didn't want to throw my energy, just because it's going to deal more damage than the Shadow Quagsire. But I'm going to get the full farm down just because I can Icy Wind attack drop the final Pokemon, which is Shadow Gligar. Can anyone tell me why Medicham is still getting banned in every Great League remix and Gligar isn't? Anyways, I thought I could just win the game 1v3 with the Polyrath. Ice Wind barely doesn't knock out the Shadow Gligar, but I don't have to reveal my double, which is crazy to say just because this is a double showcase after all. Next game, we have Steelix into Jellicent. So a very problematic lead. I do gotta stay in this matchup. Steelix is going to have the upper hand versus the Polyrath, which is insane a lot just because they both have disadvantageous matchups. My opponent goes for an Ice Beam, which probably is the second worst move to go for. I feel like the first worst is gonna be the Bubble Beam just because like it's really gonna be a bait move. So I'm just gonna go for a Psychic Fang spam. I did try to bluff a crunch. So my opponent should be going for another Ice Beam. It is a Shadow Ball this time. And I get the Dragon Tail farm down and I have a Psychic Fangs. In comes an Umbreon. We have two fighters, so I'm just going to switch in this matchup. I come in with my Polyrath instead of my Double because Jellicent is going to be the answer to Polyrath. So Polyrath should be safe now. In comes a Beedrill, so they're going to take a lot of damage from charge moves, so I do bait with the Icy Wind. Polyrath's fast moves, on the other hand, are going to deal nothing to Beedrill, being double resisted. Opponent goes for a Fell Stinger, so it's going to get rid of the attack drop the Beedrill previously had. Now, Skull doesn't get an attack drop, so the attack from the Beedrill is still regular. I actually committed a shield here. Now looking back at it, the reason I committed this shield was I thought they were plus two Fell Stinger, but they were only one. I guess shielding a plus one drill run is still okay, but I go for the payback. It barely doesn't knock out the B drill, but luckily Steelix with the triple resisted poison jab typing is going to snipe down the B drill, and Double should be able to take this game. Body Slam will get a two hit knockout. I'm going to no shield this because I think the lose con in this game was going to be shielding a Psychic Fangs. I get defense dropped and a foul player Dark Pulse knocks me out. Body Slam finishes off Umbreon for the win. So if you want to run Vigoroth in the Great League Remix, I highly recommend you try the Dub Wool as I definitely had a lot of fun with it and it's a very effective safe switch and flexible Pokemon. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming and I'll see you in the next video.